Good evening, this is Hassan Khan and you're listening to Tactical Talk Radio. Today we'll be discussing the future of US-Pakistan relations in light of how distant they have become owing to deep mistrust stemming from the evolving security dynamics of South Asia. To understand co- this complex situation, we have with us today Hussain Nadeem, the Director of South Asia Study Group at the University of Sydney, who previously worked for the Government of Pakistan. He joins us now from Sydney. Welcome to the show, Hussain. Thank you. Good to be here, Hassan. Hussain, in a recent article of yours for War on the Rocks, you stated that the U.S. perception of Pakistan is still based on an obsolete security par- paradigm that focuses on armed t- twisting, especially when mentioning Christine Fair's views. What's the core reason for most lobbyists and officials in Washington to take a hardliner, outdated and perhaps a plain ignorant stance when Pakistan has taken consolidating steps in recent years for ensuring stability in the region? I think the, the core reasons are both internal and external, specifically when we discuss the issue of the perception in Washington, D.C. regarding the regarding Pakistan and its efforts in war on terror. Uh, there is some truth to the fact that there have been issues where Pakistan has been uh, uh, not falling in, uh, quote unquote, the line of the U.S., uh, but I think a lot, it, it's uh, it's an outdated and archaic debate. Basically, what I argued in the War on the Rocks uh, article is also the same thing that the the debate is becoming outdated now for too long we have been discussing the to do more and to give more policy when it comes to pakistan and it hasn't really gotten us anywhere uh, the us has tried practically the carrots sticks you name it the policies have been tried pakistan on its end has played uh, has cried victim as well that they don't get the the aid that they actually deserve the csf funds are not sufficient and that pakistan is doing whatever it could to uh, change things on ground but i think we have to look on two levels across this thing one is in the debate in the washington dc in dc there are experts there are uh, policy wonks who have been there uh, since the era of cold war i mean you look at the discourse coming from major writers who are working on pakistan they're the same writers who were present during the uh, during the Ziaul Haq regime. They're the same um, experts who have been too grounded in history. And I think it is very difficult for them to get beyond that uh, circular debate that has emerged in the U.S. where uh, they look at Pakistan from either the prism of Afghanistan or from the prism of the, from India. So I think that has to change. And that really needs to be changed, not just in the U.S., but from the Pakistan. My question is, when I talk to the people in the Pakistan security establishment, are you giving enough reasons and capacity for people who can change that narrative? I think the question, uh, the answer to that is very simple. Uh, Most of the people who uh, Pakistan government sent to uh, discuss Pakistan-US issues, for instance, last year, uh, uh, Mushahid Hussain was sent to, to the US, Salman Bashir was sent to the US, and they have been talking about the same thing over and over again for way too long. And I think it is to a point where the conversation has become so convoluted that nobody's listening anymore. All people are doing is now basically talking. And I think that is one of the core reasons why we see this jumbled up debate where it is highly polarized. People are peddling their own interests, their own agendas, and we're not getting anywhere because of that. Uh, but what about the special representative of office on Afghanistan and Pakistan, which were recently disbanded and remerged with the South Asia desk at the State Department? Certain officials and media groups in India were of the opinion that this would rehyphenate India and Pakistan equally like back in the 90s. In your view, is the Trump administration planning and heading towards such a policy given the conflicting statements coming out of the White House? I think it's too early to to make any statement about what the Trump administration plans to do specifically in Afghanistan, Pakistan and South Asia. Uh, they don't have a defined policy yet. Uh, and we are still debating what the exact policy is going to be. My opinion on this so far is that initially when President Trump took the office, he extended a warm hand on uh, getting Pakistan and India to sit together on on Kashmir. He also has been talking a lot about about pulling out from Afghanistan. But I think the campaign promises is one thing. Initial 100 days promises is another thing. And then the reality is a very different thing. Uh, I think the current Donald Trump's administration will first get get its hand uh, or get, get a more grounded reality on what exactly the situation is on ground. Uh, and it's really hard right now to actually make a guess. A lot of wild speculations are going on. Uh, whether Pakistan will be further squashed, that the Pakistan is going to be facing a difficult time. Uh, I personally don't think that is the case. Uh, the people in the Trump administration 
have had a previous relations with pakistan have worked in different capacities with the military to military interactions and i think the 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 issue is not that simple that we say that it's not going to be afpac it's going to be more south asia centric where india and pakistan is going to be the driving force which is going to bring peace to afghanistan i think it's way too early to say anything until unless the trump administration and the white house is not very crystal clear about the subject itself uh, when modi met trump in a recent white house meeting trump declared kashmir as indian and admi- administrated uh, kashmir the srinagar one so do you think that trump is uh, playing politics with india i i think it's kind of hard to um, really give a verdict on president trump's uh, statements uh, at one point uh, just a few months back or a couple of weeks back he was praising qatar uh, for its role in war on terrorism for having great ties with the US and mm. in a matter of few days after uh, Qatar was isolated by the GC in the GCC uh, the uh, president Donald Trump had a very different opinion about uh, the same state same uh, monarchy so i think uh, one cannot really uh, this you know this is one of the difficult questions that is coming out as an analyst uh, i am finding it more difficult to read the united states now it could be either a grand strategy that president trump is trump is playing that nobody is able to understand the next moves or it could just be the case that the presidency is in such a shock right now and it is it is struggling to keep up its uh, keep its own power in in washington dc that they are unable to come up with a coherent strategy and that is what i think is more likely that president trump right now uh, his statements his policies uh should not be taken uh, too too seriously and i think they are open to flexibility but what about declaring the hizbul mujahideen leader said salahuddin as a global terrorist the only beneficiary was india so then why is the us trying to appease it uh, shouldn't the us That's... be you know questioning the indian for their lack of transparency pertaining to the human rights violations in kashmir i think this the, the issue of kashmir when it comes to the us is exactly the same as issue of balochistan when it comes to pakistan in the us mm. so these are topics that uh, the us either tries to stay neutral stay away from or they would try to appease for instance the us has historically kept a policy of uh, no comments on balochistan or not supporting the balochistan resistance movement or whatever that is going on the same is kind of similar with in the in the us where it comes to kashmir as well uh, th- this is not a new policy for the us or for the president trump the appeasement policy on kashmir specifically regarding to lashkar e taiba and other groups that are operating inside kashmir yes. has been uh, has been there since the obama administration uh, there is a constant appeasement the, the there is a flux in the global dynamics where the us is trying to have a more cordial relations with india and in the process of that there have been a lot of appeasement back and forth so i i don't personally think it's president trump's policy it is more state department driven you are aware of the fact that rick tillerson recently stated that he is bound by state department decision making i mean his hands are tied basically so then who is running the state department right now at the moment the the it is hard to predict who's running the show in the us administration because there is no one person plus there are layers of uh, now, now the family is also been included uh, mm. in 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 middle east for instance jared kushner is uh, practically running the show beyond state department and beyond what uh, pentagon so he's directly representing the prime, uh, the president of the united states and he's running the saudi israel policy uh, even when it comes to the arms deals so at the moment on south asia there is no clear cut evidence to as to who is running the policy but the sources that i have talked to state department is still running the show uh, and right from the white house the policies are being directed on that front my final question is that the china and russia have jumped in as major players in the afghan peace process do you believe that the us should take a step back rather than sending additional troops given how complex the situation has become with beijing pushing washington aside for a meaningful peace initiative with full full backing of islamabad i personally think that the us does not have the credibility to bring peace in afghanistan anymore i think the the credibility the, uh, specifically when it comes to political and military credibility has been lost uh afghan war has been going on for the past almost 60 16 years now and uh, within the actors that are playing in afghanistan in pakistan and afghanistan both of the security establishments uh they are looking much more towards china and that there is a good reason for that as well partly because one uh, the us the distractions that the us have their political dynamics uh 
take precedence when it comes take more prominence than uh, than the foreign policy issues uh, a lot of times we see that uh, the security establishment in pakistan has a concern that they do not want pakistan to be converted into iraq or syria which is why i think the us really needs to build that level of credibility and trust before it can have a meaningful dialogue on afghanistan uh, with growing chinese presence in pakistan and also in afghanistan and the fact that the chinese are part of this region i think china i'm not too sure about russia at the moment but the china ha- is probably going to be the pivotal actor when it comes to peace in afghanistan and the more quicker us realize this fact i think better it will be for the region and globally thank you so much hussain for providing your insight on into these matters it was a pleasure to have you on tactical talk radio thank you until the next episode good night